Today our community is faced with the challenges of a growing population, a migration towards metro areas, and strained resources. We're expected to do more with less. This puts a big burden on our transportation system, and yet for the past 100 years it's changed relatively little. We're still basically fossil fuel-based planes, trains, and automobiles. The good news is that science and technology are finally able to bring viable solutions to create sustainable transportation systems. It will not happen overnight, but it is happening today, and each decade that progresses, we're going to look back and see that change, and it's going to be pretty dramatic in the coming years. Multimodal transportation used to refer to the transportation of ship goods using a couple different means of transportation. Today it's really slang for everything that's not driving your car. <laughs> Buses, trolleys, car share, bike share, ride hailing, skateboarding, walking. You know, there's a trend within, particularly if you look at both young and old, to, to saying they don't even need a car anymore, right? They don't want to own a car. Be mindful of, of those changes and, and the fact that these are the, going to be the impetus that, that will really allow us to try these new models and systems. But the challenge that we're going to face is integrating a very complicated, complex set of stakeholders into services to provide safe, reliable, simple, and cost-effective travel. No single mode, and, and as we talked about, is actually going to win here. It's going to be a mix of all different modes of transportation and we're gonna to have to integrate those to make it work. Disruptive technology might be an overused label, but when it's applied to electric vehicles and charging, it kind of fits. Switching to driving on electricity from gasoline is really gonna require a paradigm shift. That's what we're focused on at ChargePoint, basically creating the fueling system of the future, right? It's gonna be a national and global system that has to be put in place. It has to be easy to use and access where you sleep, where you work, where you play, and where you shop. Contrary to popular myths, electric cars are inherently more efficient and reliable than their gasoline counterparts. The electric drivetrain and its modular design are going to enable and disrupt the status quo. The existing auto OEMs the new consumer electronic manufacturers are all going to start bringing vehicles into this market and it's because of that electric drivetrain and, and no monopoly that that is out there today that's going to make that shift happen and that bodes well for consumers there's a lot of great new cars and models coming down the pike you're going to see cost parity or, or even improved performance with these vehicles that is really going to impress and, and make the economic uh, change happen. For our community, the environmental benefits of EVs are obvious. What's not obvious is the economic impacts that happen secondarily, which is the creation of jobs. We're talking about contractors, engineers, architects, maintenance technicians, right, and a whole host of other jobs. And that's important to our community in making this shift happen. For the short term, we must continue to make investments in rebates, tax incentives, and programs that attract capital and lower the adoption costs for consumers to keep this trend going. Eventually, the market will work itself out and, and these technologies will, will win the day. Today, we're in the early stage of electric vehicle adoption. We have basically 13,000 EVs and plug-in hybrids in San Diego County, and that's gonna increase by basically 4X by 2020. What that means is we're going to need roughly about 50 to 55,000 charging stations in San Diego County alone by 2020. So it's time to move, right? Time to act and time to make this happen. The next few years are going to bring new products, increased competition, various business models are going to get vetted out, policy and legislative battles are going to be resolved, and standards and technologies are going to simply turn into best practices. DC fast charging is going to increase. You're going to see uh, the induction of medium and heavy duty electric transportation is going to see on the rise and systems to meet that. 
down the road, we have some challenges with things like how to, tra how to charge a self-driving car. Who's going to plug it in, right? <laughs> anyway, my get started advice and just kind of a last comment. Build your core competencies through education and trial. Shorten the range of your capital investment cycles to account for rapid expansion, technology advances, and the largely unaccounted for maintenance and operation costs of these systems. They need to be bulletproof, and highly utilized infrastructure requires maintenance. But most of all, embrace EVs. They're really cool. Thank you.